Hey everybody, welcome back to the new videos channel and today we're looking to the Nuxt upgrade command and especially the dash dash dedupe flag, what it does and why it's important for a project. Here we go. Whenever there is a new Nuxt version and you read for example the release notes or the corresponding blog posts like in Nuxt 4.1, you always find an upgrading section. And our recommendation for upgrading is using Nuxt CLI, of course but specifically here the upgrade command with the dash dash dedupe flag. But very often people wondering, okay, I can just bump Nuxt by like, I don't know, changing things in the package.json and install my dependency, I guess, especially when pending the version of Nuxt for every release anyway. But in this video, we wanna take a look at why this dedupe flag is important, why you should do this also in other projects, not only with Nuxt, what the benefits of deduping your dependencies are and what's happening under the hood. So let's have a look. Now, first stop to take a look what's actually happening under the hood is taking a look at the upgrade command itself. Of course, we are in the file here right away, links as usual also in the description. And here we have a few things like optimizing for nightly to saying, okay, getting the nightly dependency, getting versions, etc., etc., required versions. And then we have the command that's defined through city, another unjs package. And eventually, if we just take a quick look, we will find uh, here a dedupe argument to say, okay, should we or should we not dedupe dependencies after upgrading? And this is of course also used further to say, okay, which method should be used when we upgrade either force, so like completely nuking the log file, installing new things, we can skip stuff, or we can just say we want to dedupe the whole thing. This is also requested in case there is no method set here. So it will ask you, okay, would you like to dedupe your log file, which is the recommended way or just like nuke everything. It also says clearly that this can fix problems with hoist dependency versions and will also ensure that you have the most up-to-date dependencies. In any case, no matter if you just want a nuke log file or dedupe your dependencies lightly, this will all be deferred to the dedupe dependencies method, which is not part of the CLI itself, but actually part of another package called NYPM. And this is our next stop. So let's have a look at that unjs package NYPM. It's a unified package manager for Node.js covering, well, NPM, PNPM, Yarn. I guess that's why we have NYPM to cover like uh, NPM, Yarn, and PNPM. Of course, Bun and Dino are also covered, but they might have a bit less functionality because their package managers are having a few less functionalities compared to things like PNPM. Nevertheless, this is a way to deal with uh, your dependencies in a unified way. And you might are familiar with a concept similar to this by using NI from Anthony Fu here to just make sure you always use the right package manager. Uh, NYPM is a bit different though because it also exposes a programmatic API to make sure, okay, I can add dependencies through the package or also detect the package manager, install dependency and dedupe dependencies here too. I think now it's a really good point to talk about what deduping dependencies actually mean because we've heard it quite a bit now. We know how it's kind of supported for the underlying package. But what is happening here? Why do we need to do this? Or why we should do this? And to understand the need for deduping, we have to look at the dependency graph, especially here of Nuxt.js. And you can see these are, well, quite a few packages. Uh, link to also this representation in the description as usual. We'll go with not npm graph here, which is a very helpful tool to visualize all of that. But here we go with Anthony's tool, which does it visualize it a little bit different uh, and a bit more uh, visual for, for the video here. So if we take a look, we have Nuxt itself, and Nuxt depends on, for example, uh, the Nuxt DevTools package, right? And if we take a look here, we have Nuxt itself, and Nuxt depends on various packages, like for example, the Veed Builder, if you use Veed, which is the default, or the DevTools. And these packages depend on other packages, depending on other packages, etc., etc. You know how it works in the NPM ecosystem. If we zoom out a bit, well, there are quite a few things here. Not all are always used, but depending on which builder you use, if you use dev tools, etc., etc., that is in action. Now, the important part is though, if we visualize it slightly different, so let's go in a view here by depth, we say, okay, we have Nuxt here, level two, so the direct dependencies of Nuxt.js, like view shared, defu, etc., and then we have like level three, so dependencies of dependencies, four, five, etc. Now, one of the interesting parts to take a look at is the report view, because here we not only see what is ESM or CGS, that's by the way, a, a topic for a totally different video, right? Um, but we also see multiple versions. So we see packages that are used in multiple versions, and that can be minor, major, or also pin patch versions. Now, this is not necessarily bad, but of course we want to make sure that we don't have the same NPM dependency multiple times if possible. And if certain 
sub-dependencies need different uh, major versions, well, then we can't do much except maybe urging the people uh, of these sub-dependencies to like uh, bump a new version and then make sure they can all be used. But here is a twist. This can also happen in your private project just by updating your dependencies. And for that, it's time to pack out the chart. All right, let's get started and say, here is your application, right? And your app has different dependencies. Let's say your app depends on, on Nuxt itself, right? Which is, well, most likely true if you're a Nuxt user. Otherwise, also no big deal, but you should check out the framework. It's pretty cool. Okay, so here it depends on Nuxt.js. So it's basically Nuxt, and we say version is something like 4.1.0. All right, we also want to get all the minor versions and patch version updates, etc. And now you might say, okay, you know what, I also have a dependency, uh, a direct dependency, for example, on Vue.js, because I have, I don't know, uh, components that are Vue only, I want to test that, etc., etc. So here we can say, okay, this should be like uh, 3.5.0. Or it's maybe also older, we say it was at least 3. Now, as Nuxt is a Vue-based framework, Nuxt also has a dependency on Vue itself. So this is technically also the case here. And Oftentimes we make sure, okay, this is the latest version. So we say like, I don't know, 3.5, or if let's say it was a bit older, 3.4, something like that here. So this would be the, the right graph here. And of course this applies to many other dependencies, especially the ones in the UnJS ecosystem where you have a lot of packages depending on things like Defu, Dester, Fetch, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what's the problem here? Actually, the biggest problem is if you bump one of these versions. So let's say, Hypothetically, in your project, Nuxt, the installed version would have been 4.1.0 here. Let's see, okay, no problem. And in a patch version 4.1.1, well, we bump the required view version down here from like 3.4 to like, I don't know, 3.4.15 to make sure, all right, this runs in the latest patch, something like that. Or we say we want to have the minor version, so we say, okay, this is 3.5 at least. Now, if you update, your dependencies now. This wouldn't be a big deal because, okay, no problem, uh, 3.5 easily. So we can just install view 3.5.0 that satisfies this requirement. But now we also have a problem because your own application also depends on view greater than 3.0.0. And this dependency here is not necessarily updated. So you might end up with two or even multiple versions of a package that you might not want because it would just say like, okay, let's bump up this part here. Uh, we keep the other dependencies as they are to be deterministic. And of course you don't want to have two different versions of you. Actually, this uh, would probably result in very common errors where you might have one of these common errors with you actually is this dreaded cannot read property is CE of null uh, message. That happens, for example, when you use module federation or also can happen uh, when you use Nuxt and have exactly that problem two different package versions of you used in, I don't know, each different package. So this is also something that uh, Torsten pointed out here even years ago. So this is not like a, a new problem, actually. It's been around for a while. Uh, and he mentioned, okay, the solution is pretty simple. Just use one single version because Vue uses a global singleton to track the current rendering instance, at least if it doesn't use vapor mode. Nevertheless, this is always a recommended idea. But besides that, these issues with the duping can break applications or say, oh yeah, I, I can't build my application. This is kind of obvious then. It can also have subtle differences in how things work. Plus, well, you don't necessarily need two times the same dependency in your JS bundle, even though we have tree shaking, etc. So if you can dedupe your dependencies, you can also make sure that as much as possible, the same versions are used, the same newer versions are used, so don't downgrade in a certain way. And you will have a smaller bundle with better tree shaking because then you can just take that one function instead of multiple and extract them. But now the question is, how can we actually dedupe dependencies? I mean, sure, we have that uh, Nux command. We still have to dig deeper in how NYPM does it, but how does it work in a normal JavaScript project? And the good news is that major package managers support it through a command. NPM, Yarn, and PNPM all have a dedupe command. Yarn even has an option to set a strategy to always use the most recent uh, dependencies to never downgrade in a certain way. Um, and these all work out of the box. Unfortunately, package managers from Bun and Dino, they don't support it. So there's an open issue since 2022 to have a dedupe command for Bun install, for example. And same for Dino, they also don't have a dedupe command here which is quite unfortunate because especially for bigger projects, this is quite necessary. Because there you don't necessarily want to nuke your dependencies all the time and your log file, 
because that has other side effects, which we'll take a look now. And we do that by jumping into the source code of NYPM of the API.ts file, also link for that in the description as usual, and take a look at how ddupe dependencies work there. Now we have a couple of options to be passed in, like the directory, the package manager, running it silent, uh, and also an option to recreate the log file, so basically forcing to dedupe yes or no. This option, for example, is passed from Nuxt if you say, okay, I do it with dash dash force, otherwise it's not set. And what's happening is, of course, we get our operations, then we see if deduping is even supported at all, and that's the case for package managers except Bun and Dino here. Then we check if recreate log file is set or not. This is based on the options at the first, and of course, if the option is not set, well, then we want to make sure uh, to check if the package manager is supported. If it's Bun and Dino, you only have the way to nuke the log file anyway. And then what will happen, of course, it will check the log files if it should nuke them, remove them, and then install dependencies again. So creating a new log file. But usually, if it's supported, which is hopefully the main case, then we'll have a look here. And what will happen if everything is supported is, well, there's a special case for Yarn version 1 where we just run install, but otherwise we will just run a dedupe command, which is available in these package managers, and they will just do it by default. It also means we don't have to nuke the log file, so we don't have to remove it and reinstall all the dependencies. And that's kind of it already. You might still wonder though, what is the exact difference now between running this dedupe command and between reinstalling uh, all the dependencies or like nuking the log files and running npmi or pnpmi, etc. And for small projects, it doesn't really matter because then you don't have to take care about uh, specific versions of dependencies usually. But if you have huge projects with like not just, I don't know, five or 10 direct dev dependencies and dependencies, but more like hundreds, you don't necessarily want to nuke your log file and just say, oh yeah, give me the latest minor version from everything, because then it starts to become very difficult to see, oh, now there's, there's an error in production or like our CI fails, because maybe one of these new minor version has some kind of um, bug or unexpected behavior. So there you want to make sure you do really fine-grained dependency updates. Ideally, you have something right ren renovate or like depend about anyway, which will bump your dependencies regularly. Then recreating the log file is, well, doing more harm uh, than good, which is why there is the ddupe command to make sure, okay, we keep the version constraints, but we basically remove all these doppelganger dependencies and make sure we can use the same version where possible and where the constraints allow. So... What does it mean for you? Well, it means if you see that you should use npx next upgrade dedupe or pnpm dlx, etc, etc, so using this CLI command, I would recommend you to do so, because it is the easiest way to actually upgrade to the latest version. You will have no issues with conflicts, for example, using different versions of, like, as said before, ofetch, defo, dester, unhead, etc, etc, and you'll get less dependencies that will still fit all the constraints in. If for whatever reason you use a different package manager, such as buns or dinos, well, then you can just nuke your log file. It will do the same in the command as well, so there's no reason not to use the command. In smaller projects, it's also just fine to say, okay, remove my pnpm uh, log file or my package JSON, uh, package log JSON, very important difference. Um, that's usually also good to go, but um, especially in non-nux projects, I would also recommend to um, upgrade dependencies, then deduping everything, and you're good to go. Any questions left, drop them in a the comment. Otherwise, um, see you all next week or in some older videos. Keep it up and happy hacking.